In SQL one speaks of self-joins if the same table is queried more than once. So we join a table with itself. In some query scenarios, it's necessary to query the same table more than once. And the reason is that with our tuple variables, they iterate over the rows in these tables and a tuple variable always points to one row at each time. So sometimes it's necessary to look at two or more rows of the same table at the same time. Let's have a look at an example. So we want to write a query that gives us the students that have received nine points for both homework one and two. So what are we going to query? Clearly, we are going to query the students table because we want to have the name of those students that have gotten nine points for homework one and two. Also, we want to query the results table because we need to look up the results of the student for homework one and two. And because we want to look at two different homeworks, every row in the results table contains one result, but now we want to look at the result for homework one and the result for homework two at the same time, we will need to query the results table twice. So let's give this a try. So we want to have the first and the last name of the student. We want to select from the students table. Let's call the tuple variable s. And we also want to look at the results table. Let's call this r1. So later we will need another row of the results table. But maybe first let's start with the students that have gotten nine points for homework one. So we write the where clause and we say, First of all, we need to have a join condition. So we want to look only at those ro rows in the results table where the sit matches the sit of the current student that we are looking at. So this is our join condition for S and R1. Now, moreover, we want to have a condition that says we are looking at the homework one results. So let's say that we want R1.category is equal to homework. and our one.number is equal to one. Okay, so we have a join condition. We're only looking at the results for the corresponding student. We say that we look only at the homework results and we only look at homework one. What is still missing is the condition that the result of this homework should be nine points. Okay. So this should give us the first and the last name of all the students that have gotten nine points for homework one. Elvis Presley. Let's have a look. Who has gotten nine points for homework one? Indeed, there's only one student that has gotten nine points for homework one. And this is the student 102. This is indeed Elvis Presley. So now we want to have all the students that have gotten nine points for homework one and for homework two. So we also query the results table a second time to look at the second row at the same time. We again need to have a join condition. So this will almost be the same. So I'm copying this. So we have again a join condition saying that the sit of the second row in the results table that we're looking at should also match the sit of the student. So our two dot sit also has to match. And we have conditions that we are looking also at the homework result. But now we are looking at a different homework. We're looking at homework two. And we want that the number of points is also nine. I actually think there's no student that has gotten nine points for both homeworks, is there? Apparently, Elvis Presley has gotten nine points for both homework results. Ah, yeah, that's actually true. Elvis Presley, student 102, has gotten nine points both for homework one and for homework two.
So we could also change this query. We could say that we want to have all the students that have gotten at least, let's say, at least nine points for homework one and at least nine points for homework two. Let's see what we get then. Still only Elvis Presley. If we say we want at least eight points for both homeworks, then also George Orwell qualifies. Let's check this. George Orwell is student 101. George Orwell has gotten 10 points for homework one and eight points for homework two. So indeed at least eight for both homeworks. So we see that on the slides, we almost have the same solution that we've just developed ourselves. Now we want to write a query that gives us all the students that have solved at least two homework assignments. Let's have a look at this query. This query does not work, but why does it not work? We query the students table, we query the results once, we query results a second time. We have a join condition, which ensures that the result one row that we are looking at matches the student that we're looking at. Also, we have a join condition for R2 saying that the result two row that we're looking at also matches the student that we're looking at. We specify that we only look at homework results for R1 and also only at homework results for R2. So we are looking at two rows for the correct student, both of them homework results. So why does this query not give us what we want? Let's have a look. So let's execute the query. If we look through this query result, then we see that here also is Lisa Simpson included among the results. Lisa Simpson is the student with SID 103. So if we look at the results table, the student with SID 103 has two results, but one of them is an exam result. There's only one homework result for student 103. So why is student 103 included in this result? The only possibility is that both R1 and R2 point to the same result. They both point to this row of the results table. So this exactly points to the mistake that we've made because we did not ensure that we actually look at two different results. Both R1 and R2 range over the entire results table, so they can be the same row. They can both point to the same row. And if they do, like in the case of Lisa Simpson, if they both point to this row, then this condition is true for both of the rows. So Lisa Simpson will be included in the result although she has only one homework result. So what we need to do is, we need to ensure that we are looking at two different results. So how do we do this? The key of the results table consists of the SID, the category, and the number. So this combination of SID, category, and number uniquely identifies the row. In our query, we already have ensured that the SID of both of the rows that we look at is the same. So we cannot enforce that the SID is different. Also the category we've enforced is in both cases homework. So if we want to ensure that we are looking at two different rows in the table results, we have to make sure that the number is different. So we have to ask that we have different homework numbers. So we have to say that the number of R1 is not equal to the number of R2. And if we execute this query now, then we see that we get George Orwell, Elvis Presley, and no other student. We don't get Lisa Simpson anymore. George Orwell and Elvis Presley are actually students that have solved two homework assignments. So this is for Elvis Presley, two homework assignments, and this is for George Orwell, two homework assignments. Now you might ask, why do they appear twice in the result? The reason is that the, uh, R1 and R2 range over all 
the rows in the results table. So R1 can point once to this result and R2 to this result and the other way around. So George Orwell will appear twice because there's two possible ways to point to these two different homework results. If we know that we have only two homework assignments, so if you're sure that there's only homework one and homework two, then we could also do this differently. We could say that R1 should point at homework one and R2 should point at homework two. The solution suggested on the slide is slightly different. This is the general approach if we want to express that we have two tuple variables that range over the same table and we want to express that they must point to different rows in the table. What do we do then? We look at the key attributes of the table. For the results, the key attributes are sit, category and number. These three together form a key of the table. And if we want to make sure that two tuple variables point to different rows, then we have to express that at least one of the key attributes must be different. If at least one of them is different, they do not point to the same row. And that's exactly what's done here. We take the key attribute sit, category and number, and we express that either the sit must be different or the category must be different or the number must be different. And if one of them is true, then we are looking at different results. Of course, we can simplify these expressions as we have done uh, just on the last slide. Because we know that the sit cannot be different, because r1.sit is equal to s.sit and s.sit is equal to r2.sit, so this can never be true, this first part. Also, the category is homework in both cases. So also this can never be true. So this disjunction boils down simply to the r1.number is different from r2.number. 